Greetings, everyone, and welcome to... It's finally happened, basically. The reveal of the Republic Gunship. I've been waiting far too long for it to actually be announced. Most people in this community have been waiting way too long for it. And, uh, yeah, it's finally happening. Now, I am very aware that we actually had some leaks in the last few days. I think actually a week ago we got our first leak. And, uh, yeah, while I usually do look at things like leaks for, uh, for LEGO sets and stuff, this is something that I've been waiting on for so long, I didn't really want to ruin it for myself. Um, I understand that MNR Productions has gone in depth on the leaks so far, but as I say, I've just kind of avoided as much as possible the images, the talk online about it, because I want my first thoughts to actually be official, you know? And, uh, yeah, this is something that it was voted for, oh, was it three years ago now? It, it's been a long time since it was voted for by, by us, by the community, and, uh, it wasn't my biggest pick, I'll be completely fair. Um, I was actually rooting for the Interceptor, uh, because I'm kind of Imperial Tech, but I'm all for getting a UCS. Uh, Republic Gunship. I'm very excited to see what it looks like. Um, it's, it's a set that I've never actually had myself. It's something that I always looked at in the, uh, you know, the catalogs and stuff like that and on lego.com and whenever I went, saw it in a shop, I would always, like, think about it, but it's never something that I've actually picked up. So, a UCS model, this could be my personal first, um, UCS model, which is really exciting. And, uh, yeah, let's just see what the reveal is like. I can't believe I should talk two minutes there. <laughs> um, okay. Chosen by you it is. I, I don't get why they've decided to go with, like, some Yoda speak. Unless... I mean, I haven't seen the minifigures yet, Hi, so... my name's David Hall, otherwise known as Solid Brick Oh, wow. So, I did run a Solid Brick production uh, doing this. Lego has sent over a very large package... They told me it's Lego Star Wars. I mean, good on him. It. He's someone that so I, I don't know do inside. watch from time to time. He's a very good YouTuber. Of what it could be. It honestly gives me goosebumps thinking about the set I hope it is. A lot of people so are very excited for it. it. <laughs> it's like, I think find out for the vast majority of the community is really excited to see this set come out. Star Wars design team, so that's also really exciting. Definitely stay tuned for the whole video to see that. Without further ado, let's get into this. So this is both a, uh, it's supposed to be an unboxing and also designer interview. So obviously Solid Bricks here, uh, David, he's he's going to be doing the unboxing. He's going to be giving first thoughts and stuff, just as I'm going to be responding to what's actually happening and stuff. And uh, yeah, then we've got a designer interview, which I always think are really interesting. I really enjoy watching them. Um, so that's going to be fun, hopefully. And honestly, anything is better than what happened at LegoCon. Um, I was originally going to live stream LegoCon, and honestly, I'm so glad I didn't. That was such a mess of a show. There was basically nothing of value in that entire show, uh, because everything had been leaked so far in advance. Um, whereas this, I say, it's been about a week, I think, since uh, leaks started appearing, and they were very blurry from my understanding. I'm just, I'm more interested in seeing, is it going to be an episode two or is it going to be a Clone Wars Republic gunship? That's, that's episode two. You can tell by the gun placements. Um, there is a distinct change. The uh, ball turrets on the side are uh, a different, depending on which version. That looks oh, really cool. It's the ultimate collector series. Republic. No minifigures being shown on the front of the box is interesting. I do wonder what Better the minifigures are actually going to be. Obviously, everyone was hoping that it would be um, Jedi Bob. Uh, it just looked like... Is that a Jedi on um, top for the one-to-one? -one? <laughs> oh. Incredibly heavy. It's a... Is that a standard clone trooper? That's a bit of a shame. And then Mace Window. If that's an exclusive Mace Window, that's actually pretty good. I'm, I'm a fan of that character. That I'm a huge fan <sighs> of the, uh, the black background that they've started doing for ready, UCS sets. I'm I know some people are a bit against it because they think it's a bit boring. And I can understand that, like, when you're used to seeing proper, like, background images, it, it does make more sense for it to be like that, but... 
there is additional details that we'll be talking about here. Yeah, they, they soon, look, it looks really good. Even details for the rocket launchers. On and the, the nice thing about a set like this, gunship, it's actual minifigure scale. Where a lot of UCS sets are you can see, either too large or still to far too small um, for to minifigure scale. But this is going to be so actual now, minifigure we'll scale. Ahead and or as close as they can UCS reasonably get. Because I think a lot of people mention this a lot. But minifigures are not really... They're not correct. You know, the proportions are all over the place when it comes to a minifigure, like a minifigure. So, you know, the proportions are going to be slightly wrong uh, for minifigure scale, but like, I'm I'm all for this. Um, oh, wow. Okay. That is a lot of, that's a lot of parts. I didn't, I, I didn't actually catch how many parts this is supposed to be. David might mention it in a second if he hasn't already. That is a lot. Oh, this, that was a, a bag number 11. How many bags is it going to be? Like, how many sections? I, as I said, I've never had a UCS set. I, I don't really watch too many videos on UCS sets. So, I don't know if, like, is having another box on the inside, like, normal? Is that normal practice? That's a lot of parts. Oh, wow. That, I think it, you know, a lot of I, there was a bag 17 a there. bit mixed on keeping the boxes but i have to say huh. this is one of the most beautiful boxes it box looks art, it, lo it, just, it looks phenomenal holy cow, honestly this is a keeper do not throw this box oh, away i'm trying to see he, he kept moving the box so i couldn't see the uh, part list part number that's a lot that is a ridiculous amount yeah because there's a 17 on the left i think that's the highest i can see so 17 bags that's that's Here's that's some of the new set. special elements that are included in the set. So that's the domes and the cockpits. See, lot of brand new exclusive printed pieces for this set. You should hope so, really. For, for a set like this, like it does need certain that's things to be rods also. to be uh, to be printed and to be new. Here is the instruction booklet that's included. I do Stickers wish that the uh, the plaque was a print. I understand why they can't because of how those plaques are actually made. Um, they have so to have the indents in them. Also known so I, I understand it is a bit... L-A-A-T, or Low Altitude Assault Transport. Hmm. There's some more information here on the plaque sticker. And boy, can I not wait to put this on. Here's some of the stickers that come in this set. It's not Here's terrible. Very to be fair, say the size, size of it. Like it They've clearly put a lot of uh, detail work into the actual build. Long. And how how many pages? Boy, Tom? This thing looks it, something something hundred and five. I, I said, I but I didn't hear it properly. To start building this. So what's very special about the Ultimate Collector Series Republic? So we Gunship chose it. It was actually the winner from a poll from earlier in February of 2020, where it was, wait, it was only 2020. I thought it was 2019 or 2018. Between three different sets for what the next UCS set would be. Between those was the Republic gunship, the Nebulon B frigate, and a Thai bomber. Oh, sorry, not an, I said Inceptor earlier, didn't I? I meant bomber. That's right my bad. The very first page when you open the instruction booklet. It's even signed by Jens, the director of LEGO Star Wars. We love Wars, Jens. And someone who will actually be interviewing here in just a few minutes. Moving Jeez. on to the next page, like, you can see Yen. Wow, it's actually Hans was massive, actually isn't it? Designer that? of the Republic gunship. He's also the designer of the very iconic Ultimate Collector series, Millennium Falcon. So I have no doubt. That very this popular will be set. Quite the it's one build. of the best looking sets they've ever made, the Millennium Falcon. I absolutely love this line. The shroud of the dark side has fallen, begun the Clone Wars has. This is the very first Ultimate Collector series Clone Wars set that we've ever. Is the foot? Oh no, I we have seen. Um, I actually remember. Seeing oh, was it now? We have seen the Naboo Star Starfighter, Wars haven't we? Ship I think that's the books. only are, other UCS prequel set there. Definitely, they included that in the uh, instruction booklet, man. Because we've never seen a Clone Wars incredible. era uh, UCS set. I think the only one we've ever seen is the uh, Naboo Starfighter. It's actually incredible to think about. <laughs> So this is pretty cool. There's actually a page called The Origin of the Clone Troopers, which talks about a nice little bit of background. <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi visiting Kamino for the first time, realizing that 200,000 units were ready and more than a million on the way. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Brilliant. That's very exciting to see in the instruction booklet. So it's broken down into 17 bags. Yeah, I was right. I was right. Different, 
uh, sections that bags will create the gunship over time. That's Looks that's to be incredible. The huge build. That's I a ridiculous number of bags. I like I don't think I've, I've ever had a set with more than like five. <laughs> like, I've, like, I think that's the level that I'm at. And now we get to start building. I mean, after all, my uh, my biggest set that I own, uh, just generally, is the uh, Republic Venator Class Star um, Star Destroyer, and uh, that thing is massive. I I, I literally um, I'm just looking at it now. It's literally just, like it's half hanging off a shelf because it just doesn't fit anywhere. <laughs> it's so big. I need to eventually. Um, like hang it from the roof or something because it, it's strong enough integrity the integrity is strong enough to actually like hold a quick introduction of who you guys are what your uh role is at the lego group it's about halfway through there yeah i'm uh, jens Unwald frederiksen i am the sign director and uh, i am responsible for the model development for lego star wars I'm Hans Walker Schlömer. that camera quality i'm, I'm sorry but like that camera quality is ago. awful awesome so which one of you had the hand in building the set I guess that would be, be my hands. Uh, Jens handed me the task, and then I, I took over. And yeah, uh, it's it is ridiculous. The big answer. To, uh, have more time to work on it than you know, a small playset. I think the um, image on the box yeah. might actually be one to one. Well, as it, it might actually be smaller than one to one, actually. In order to meet the price point, uh, I had to spend quite a, a quite a amount, a amount of money. This is why we are having this quite sizable model sitting here. With a it is huge. <laughs> like, I, I can't get over Like It is really models. big. Like No, absolutely. I uh, So I am currently, as, uh, as we just talked about, the way, actually. I'm in the midst of building my model right now. Haven't gotten to the wings yet, but uh, I'm already just like shocked about how I mean, long think how many mi Think how many clone like, troopers okay. you could fit was, in that hangar bay. Right I was like, oh, this isn't too big. Or and whatever you'd actually call it. I, I, I just call it a hangar it. because... Like, oh my god, this thing's getting It's huge. where you store things, it's but exactly like... exactly what I just told, told Jens. What I think, what I was expecting the building, the building experience would be for people. Once they, they build this section first here, mm. I was thinking, wow, well, this is quite sizable. And then I think that's a really smart way of doing it, where forward. you start with the nose and, and slowly extend to the larger part, which is the rear the and the wings, the wall, the because that's <laughs> always the sizable part of Very of nice. um, um, so I'm gonna, Republic I'm gunships. I'm actually going to be interviewing you guys while attempting to continue to build the set. So we'll see. I've never done this before, so this is fun. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, and get into some of the questions that I have for you guys. So the first question I have is, this was a set fans voted for. Uh, was it hard designing a set that had much more pressure than usual uh, since expectations were so high? Yeah, you know, we, we are... I just, here, I just wish they uh, actually the listened to us in terms of the characters. The I am same. looking at that minifig, I am happy that it does appear to be the lieutenant, the yellow-armed uh Clone yeah, Trooper, day, which uh, actually is the one that interacts with Mace in the film, group, but when it comes to, uh, the same to, to get it. yeah, I, I, I have a bit Honestly, of an issue uh, when it just I, comes I, to it was a fame, the overall, some, like, minifica selection, like, uh, for the price of the set, the size of the set, we should have two pilots, yeah, right, two pilots, a Jedi and a clone. So we've got a Jedi and a clone. It's not the Jedi we want, and it's not really the clone that we want, but we have a Jedi and a clone. Where are the pilots? So we don't have a accurate um, clone pilot, for the gunship especially. Um, it's, it's, it's questionable. Like, I'd, I'm very mixed on this set because of its minifigur selection of being Mace Window and a clone lieutenant. I usually go and try to identify the key component that would determine the size of the set. The question is, uh, does a model have a windscreen? In this case, it's, it's a big yes. So the, the windscreen, the cockpit area is quite prominent on this model. So the question is... Uh, I, I, like, I like the fact he's calling it a windscreen. <laughs> that, that's, that's just kind of funny too. And as you know, our windscreen elements usually come in size of either four wide or six wide. Four wide is usually the good size for a base set. But for UCS, uh, we have to go bigger. It's at least six wide. Yeah, case, I'm pretty, pretty sure you've gone to, uh, to eight wide before use, for uh, some of the for sets. Jedi interceptors have a quite, quite good shape and size. And by using two of them, 
Well, they pretty much get the top of the area done with a nice uh, decoration, two different decorations even. In the case. thing is, I can't help but think and it doesn't look quite the, right in the cockpit the, area, the, but I think that's because of the differences be between the Attack of the Clones the gunship and the Clone Wars gunship, because I'm much and more familiar there, with I, I, the latter. Uh, I, the model, uh, I, I hope that we get a better view when so David has finished building it, because with the camera quality, it's hard to tell the proportions properly with, you know, where the where the actual, uh, as they call it, a windshield, where that actually ends and where the uh, bricks start. Because yeah. currently and it I looks a little bit too bigger. flat. When I first um, saw the gunship, it's actually a little bit too uh, wide. I'm not the, uh, too sure on that, but on I'm, I'm just ship. hoping we get to see it fully built by David, so it's a higher uh, quality camera. The Lego element idea is, but I thought they were like the six by six size one. And when I pulled them out of the box, I realized I think these are like the eight by eight style. Um, Little, it's weird. I have I a guess, ton of those. I don't know what, I, I don't know what the front. I think. For this is, but I think I got one, one of them from like the, uh, uh, the UFO. The right here. It's the uh, from is it um, Alien no, Attack? Like, oh, wow, Something like that. Um, one of the like, older uh, lines, one of the space lines, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and I think it was one of the Space Police variant lines, and that had a massive UFO, and that has an eight by eight dome on it. In fact, if you have a really close look at the reference, you will see that, that these balls are a little smaller than the ones in the wings, but uh, we don't have nine wide balls, so I went uh, with, with, uh, with an approximation in both cases. Also, well, it'd be very difficult uh, to get the seating sure in the front gunner, gunner positions if you were well, to shrink them down as well. So it's like, I'm willing to like allow that. Because at the end of the day, the mentally, this looks fine. Needed, uh, and generally and displayed, um, you're going to have the front closer to you. So the front gunner positions are going to be a bit more, you know, it makes a lot of sense for them to be larger. So I'm fine with that overall. Did you or did you have to come up with something new that had never been done in a set you previously had designed um, and then what would you consider the overall difficulty you know this is obviously an adult 18 plus set you know would you consider this one of the more harder adult oriented sets or easier well if you already built the Star Wars UCS sets in the past you are you will be familiar with uh, any of the construction uh, principles we will find an internal frame that keeps everything together. Yeah, the, the together classic will build half this set out of Technic and then uh, cover it in, in bricks. Case, like, to, it is weird because a lot of people, myself included, uh, one thing we I don't think like that where we build mocks. Um, it's been a long time since I've worked with Technic then, uh, um, on mocks. Uh, most of my mocks have uh, like um, pure pure system structure and like yeah, I, I can understand like it as a company you do want to have a stronger um core and that would mean using technic so it's like it's one of the things where it's like i can't really understand why they do the technic shells the technic like cores the technic skeletons yeah. But at the yeah, same time, like, it's, it's just not something that uh, I would ever frame. think about, because it's just... Yeah, I, guess you, you will agree it's I mean, uh, well, most it's recently, a, um, it's well, not most recently, narrow, because uh, most recently would be the Imperial also, Shuttle, but the um, model, when it comes to the narrow, Razor Crest, the, uh, the, the Mandalorian the Bounty Hunter, Hunter Transport, as they call it, that set, um, the actual skeleton of it, is built in such a way that I, I think it looks amazing. I think it works so well because it actually kind of fits with the um, look overall of the Razor Crest. Um, I'm going to say that the Imperial Shuttle, um, its core is a little bit to a lesser extent because it actually kind of ruins the back wing. Uh, but it does make it more structural sound, so I understand it. But yeah, like having the skeletons made out of Technic, like just as a mock builder, doesn't really make sense to me. So just but I can completely get behind, like, yeah, Lego wants their builds to be structurally sound, hard to break. Uh, I mean, people like well, awesome. MNR, uh, Ryan, really they you know, really part, test uh, the durability like a, of Lego sets by, you know, throwing the them off roofs and, you know, smashing them with sledgehammers, like stuff like that. So I can completely understand why Lego is like, we want to 
try and keep sets together under the worst yes. circumstances possible yeah. no, because they, they, they know, especially with UCS sets, they're going to be displayed on shelves, on top of mantelpieces, um, you know, on higher locations than a typical Lego set. So they understand that, like, yeah, we need to make it so that there's going to be as little damage as possible if they're dropped. I've dropped the Razor Crest, which obviously isn't UCS, but I've, I've dropped that multiple times. The only thing that has come off is being parts of the engine um, construction. Like the actual body is really difficult to break, to and I appreciate that so much because I display it high up because it's the largest set, and I am clumsy. I knock things yeah, off. Just like Chacha, I'm very clumsy. You can actually more think of them as a decorative element because very often, as you also know, the UCS models they are not in minifigures, and it's also the case here. So it's close. It's as close as you're going to reasonably get because the play sets are also way too small. To these UCS models, and and it's, it's, of course, minifigures that make sense in the context. So here with the clone commander and the uh, and Mace Windu. That's not a commander. Uh, 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 Com that's a yellow. Unless uh, I'm wrong, that's so yellow. If it's accurate to the film, that, that should be yellow, which is uh, lieutenant. A commander is orange. So also in this an case, admiral, not an admiral, a, uh, the, a captain is blue, a... a New printed torso uh, heads and the one of them's red. Uh, I can't remember which. I, like they all have distinct colors initially, and, and then obviously the um, different legions the gain their own color. So like the five first is all blue, despite the fact that only it only has Captain Rex. That's the only captain for the five first. But who wouldn't display these very cool minifigures? I wouldn't. I really want to see if it is a completely new print well, for Mace Windu. Awesome, um, so that kind of leads into the next question, which is, so this is this is something I uh, I was kind of wondering when I was looking at this set. I was like, could you do this? Um, <laughs> uh, is there any way to remove all the rockets on the upper part of the launchers? Um, like in Attack of the Clones, when the heroes are pursuing Count Dooku, obviously in that scene they're like, "We're out of rockets, sir!" And you know they tried to blast. Yeah, is there a way of modifying it to look like different those, variations uh, of the? Uh, oh, uh, actually, if I say rockets, gunship? I think the rockets are under the wings, but if uh, yeah, the, the projectiles here on top in this uh, spinning magazine, I think these are uh, missiles. And in the movie, uh, uh, I remember the scene when Gunship is taking off. You look at it from from the back, and then these magazines spin, and the the missiles are loaded into the launchers. Yeah, you can say what's what's happening here. That's really you see, you see that uh, with the view down on the mm -hmm. gunship where the rockets are rotating. So that's something we have incorporated into the model because we wanted to have it as as it is in the movie. So you say the rockets rotate. How does how does that function work? Well, it's um, let's say it's manually operated, but both magazines are linked, so they they, they spin. Okay, so there's no actual mechanism. Yes. It's, it's completely more, just it like it's it's playset mechanism it's where it's completely just your pushing it along sort of deal. It will come by a surprise, but you will expect to be continuing with something completely different, and then you will build the magazines, and it will take a surprisingly long time because it's many small pieces. <laughs> How do you determine a, a set like this, especially? Uh, where you've made a, a play scale model before. How do you determine the, the scale? Do you use other Ultimate Collector Series sets to kind of reference off of? Um, I know one recently that was launched last year in 2020 was the uh, UCS A-Wing, and that was a, a much bigger model, obviously. You know, do you take a look, uh, look at that and kind of scale off things from there, or do you start somewhere else? I should hope that they did uh, try to scale uh, off that, because it's considerably out of scale with it. We are usually deciding uh, on a price that we would like to, uh, we say a price point that suits the model. Uh, so that's that's one thing. And, and then, uh, how do you say, scale is very different, depending on what type of ship or model it is. As you say, the A-Wing, that's definitely another scale uh, than the gunship here. And if you take, for instance, a Star Destroyer, uh, it's, uh, totally <laughs> the Star Destroyer is so is the biggest set that is currently available from Lego in terms of just price, area, nice um, and yet is like probably still one of the most uh, out of scale to minifigures set because, they've ever uh, released, which is good. It's just funny to me. It's so uh, massive, like it's so it's, it's way larger than I would yeah. ever be able to like store anywhere. 
and yet, right, like, so it's still it's, completely uh, out of scale with minifigures. figures. Like, and that's just one of the weird things with UCS. It's, it's just, there, it, uh, they're always the out of scale with minifigures, regardless of how big they are. And I, I think that's, that's amazing. Especially with uh, 3D design support, uh, we are usually pretty good at, at hitting things on mm. the head without uh, having to resize too much because we can pretty much see at all times where are we price wise mm. even at a stage where half the pieces are still missing but with your experience you can al already guess how many pieces are still missing how much mm. do i need to add am i am yeah. i over or does it fit what what other costs are I, th I think it's one of those things with LEGO where because like the designers are always locked into certain price points, it can actually make sets worse in the long run. Like I'm sure, like if you know, designers was given free reign, they would end up making um, way too expensive sets to actually produce. But like. I took the, it's the one of those things of the to box, me where so I, like, I can't heavy, like, personally like understand heavy. why um, Lego so they, don't just and I'm sure when I'm finished tomorrow, let designers do what they want sort of deal you know because I'm actually I've already you know only the best is good enough as as they often the say and so yet for the very loud it's not exactly uh yeah people are used to it I'm like just I'm just a bit mixed on on the general idea of uh, of it all being uh, based on cost rather than based on quality, you know. I I know, I know it's so that they can sell it, but like I don't. It, I'm just very mixed on the entire idea of it. I know that's just how Lego like, works, but it, it's it's interesting to me. Dark red. Or what comes to mind is uh, these. Yeah, on top of the the engines and guns, there are four by four round bricks. I uh, think they were not available in dark red. They may have been available in the past, but they weren't mm. right now. I better say that I have we them in dark red, so they were like at those, some point. Dark red. That's an interesting point. I've never really thought about that. So, also, uh, certain parts um, will be taken in and out of availability for the designers. So, so, so they may have produced them in the past, but that doesn't mean they can use them currently. So it's only if they've been used recently that they're able to just use them without worry. That's that is a really interesting point. I've never really thought about. Clones and Revenge of the Sith. What was the decision behind going Attack of the Clones for the theme for the gunship? Well, I think we, we talked about it here in the office, and and, um, and I think it was a pretty easy decision. And also, if you noticed, when we had the poll uh, for the... Uh, it, was a, mod, it was an Attack of the Clones the render. From, uh, from Attack of the Clones. Um, it is like the first appearance of the gunship, and yeah, we believe very impactful. The design of it is also different from uh, the one in uh, Clone Wars, where the one in Clone Wars doesn't have the big uh, the gun turrets on. Yeah, uh, that's why I said that's. <laughs> See, I know my detail. stuff when it comes to the Republic gun gunship. Thing is we know that there have been a lot of requests from fans about uh, that Lego should launch uh, more models from the prequel movies. So that was they also, should, uh, because it's the, underrepresented, uh, except for, for, for we get a ridiculous amount of Darth Maul sets. <laughs> like, that's like one thing that we get a ton of, and then everything else is kind of by the wayside from the uh, prequels. <laughs> Obviously, they used to do a lot of the boot gun ships, but yeah, uh, I, I don't really care too much about that side. Um, yeah, it's like, realistically, the vast majority that we get are... Anakin sets, mostly Starfighter, the Starfighters, guns, yeah. and then Big more sets, or mostly or the, the uh, ones, we, uh, oh, I can never remember what it's called, but the Sith the Sith that Infiltrator, that's what it is, the uh, Darth Maul ship from episode one. We don't have anything at this side, not even remotely close. So the, the trick here was to use uh, another element we recently developed, these little water ring elements, first found on the uh, uh, UX wing, on the, on the engines. And when you take the smaller board and put them inside, I need to actually see those parts because I'm not completely certain what they're on about. Of the, the board rod and the, the white casing. So that was actually quite a neat solution to this problem, which, which otherwise would have probably uh, required a new element. But I think this looks even nicer, even more Lego than an uh, mm. entirely new element would have. And that was a very, very nerdy detail from hence there. I'll just say what I about this find it impressive about this is simply the fact that we've done it have we not got the it, is the camera just attached to the table why is it shaking so much every time they hit the table i love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
yeah, yeah, you're right. It just the fact that it is a model, a use as model from the prequel trilogy is by itself uh, an achievement. Absolutely. I uh, I gotta say that was definitely one of the the cooler highlights. I was like, wow, that's oh. actually really ingenious. Okay, that, yeah, that is a really smart structure. Use that newer. I couldn't quite tell what parts they were actually talking and, about and with the uh, like with their view. Has that illusion of looking a that's lot. That's cool. Bigger, that is a really smart, uh, which is smart really, decision really overall. Honestly, quite impressive. That was definitely something I almost immediately noticed when I uh, I saw the box. I, I think you guys have really made quite the model, and I uh, I'm pretty confident in the uh, fan community reacting pretty positive to what you guys have made. The actual the nice build is phenomenal. Recognize it for for what it is. It is like a, a space version of uh, uh, like an attack or transport helicopter. Ah, he uh, nearly did it. He nearly, he nearly messed up. Because <laughs> we all know that Lego are completely against having anything to do with war. He was so close to saying attack helicopter. And then he was like, no, transport, transport, transport. It's like, oh, it's so obvious. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes the simplicity also makes things a little easier for me, but it doesn't have landing gear, nothing. It just lands on his belly, which saves me the trouble. Yeah, of of landing gear. Yeah, that is one of the weirder so design things the, with, uh, also, uh, yeah, with what people are, the are asking for. Uh, uh, gunship. It's yeah, just the fact that it's like, yeah, it doesn't have landing gear. So it's, it's one of the most interesting. Yeah, it's because so, uh, it needs to get as flat as possible. We're really... Oh, in we're universe, that's the reason. But you know what I mean? It's like it's just one of the really bad. weird that's choices that I just... I'm mean, not really like all about that, but like it, it's in universe, it's accurate. You know, George Lucas, obviously, the point looked right, so... Who am I to judge? Jens Lowe's, I like working on these big chunks of models, so it also makes me happy. Awesome, guys. Well, again, I really appreciate your time for being here. Thank you for answering my <laughs> David's questions. been so distracted by building it. Like, he's barely been listening. You can tell by his response. I'm seeing it through the webcam on you guys' end, and I'm just like, oh, I want to get there. I need to build this faster. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of the build. Yeah. Absolutely. Are we going to get... Yeah, we're going to get another time lapse. Yeah, like... Okay, so you do actually get to the uh, cockpit pretty soon. That okay, that angle that looks that looks so good. So yeah, I was completely wrong about it being um, somewhat minifigure scale as well. I thought that it wasn't far off, but just based on the cockpit alone, that is considerably right, so different. Just finished bag number twelve out. Of That's insane. 17. The next bag, 13, will actually... Even without the, the wings, it just looks wing ridiculous. The so there's the two wings, the two rocket launchers, and the two turret pods here in the I front. I love that. That's that great. That are left. And actually, there's a stand for the set. So there's still a good amount to be still built. But so far, I am extremely impressed with the model. You can see the uh, the doors here do indeed open. That was something that I was like hoping the for. The set model that we got in 2013. Uh, which is really cool. It's I, really I been say, that long. Scale is massive. Other highlights that I'm just really, really impressed with, other than the swinging doors here in the back, is the rotating rockets, and we'll take a look at that here in a little bit once the model's complete. But I'm just looking around and just finding more and more amazing details and building techniques that I'm very impressed with. I'm not huge on it, uh, the bits of orange, which kind of look like more like battle damage like, than it doesn't than what like I think they're supposed to look like. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to get a closer look on that, but that, that doesn't quite like look right to me. The playset 2013 Lego gunship, but just in a much bigger version. So this is continuing to be quite the builds. I'm ready to put these wings on. I'm ready to finish the model out. That is where we're headed now, is finishing this gunship. I am beyond excited to fully finish it, it off. It looks incredible. It really is. Like, I can't get over how good it actually does look. look like. That is what we're going to find out. Let's go ahead and continue onwards. It, should, it's, it is a remarkable set. Like That's one wing that you just built, and that was... That is so big. The wings are massive. The wings are longer than most Lego sets I own. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. But the wings alone are just... The area they take up is ridiculous. It does look so good. I do wonder, is that uh, is that Republic Insignia so, uh, sticker? Say, or is it... 
This is uh, quite print. the uh, incredible model. <laughs> but if that's a print, I, um, I can't wait for that I'm to go on Brickling. I'm lost with words right now of just how big, how massive. Are we going to get a close look at the minifigures, I wonder? I want to see if that, if that mace is, a, is an exclusive. Oh, UCS Republic gunship ever could be. It's just that good. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's that good. Uh, that mace does have, look to have uh, wow, leg printing, which just, I don't think wow, we've ever had on a mace window, so that's video. something. This is, Honestly, this might be my new that lieutenant is amazing. That that, that that clone actually does look really nice. <sighs> I do wish we got pilot. Just quickly going through some at least details. one. Like... Believe it or not, there is some functionality to this gunship. First off, you have doors that open on both sides. Um, these are I'm very happy about right that. Here. Is it? Uh, that's a very good very choice but for me personally. Feel very sturdy and attached. What's really cool is up at the top there is some rotating cannons. Do they actually um, pop they up? Actually are synced up by gears so if you turn one it turns the other do they pop up um, though it looks just like attack of the clones when it when it's rising up from the geonosis arena but does it do the rockets rise though because they need to rise above the actual the body first clone wars battle i mean i'm just getting goosebumps thinking about that right now <laughs> like wow. yeah i guess i guess they must not <laughs> um, uh they I, I must not pop up because he's not showing them i will be honest this thing is just that that's good. a shame because like you can't actually have that in this display then clone trooper commander figure. that is nice that Some is a brand new uh that's brand new legs and i think a brand new face turret so you can uh, move them around again just like how you see in the geonosis arena uh, the clone troopers would be in these pods right here and they're lasering all i'm not sure if that's and, if the uh the thing that actually holds the them on like the the arm i don't know if that's that just, accurate because wow. i remember boy. it being a more oh solid boy. um some structure. other really cool details is the double uh, pods and the and the wings and then there's some uh, can they be open to fit a minifigure in i know the two big minifigures but would you well be able to open them and put one doors in on both sides and then we're not even to the front yet where there is a full detailed cockpit for both of these right here so obviously the turrets here move in the front so oh and one last thing the uh the back portion here lowers down yeah, here's a little ramp up, i like that like i like that a lot as well i am i am very impressed actually there's even some detailing right here signifying where you hold on i need to, to see the, that orange close rope it, does, it doesn't look gunship. right uh, for passengers, you can see Padme, Obi Wan, and Anakin holding on to that uh, as they're uh, chasing Count Dooku and the Republic Is this ship. Legoland? So, um, yeah, all the details. Are what is here. it called? I, 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 you know, I mean, shocked. the uh, Legoland, I didn't, I didn't know you could get to this like cities and stuff. Is that? Is this the scale? I'm so used to Would I be able to build a clone in that scale and so uh, fit big. it in? And so detailed. Or is it too small it's for that? I'm not like the scale seems very weird to me. Also, like because it looks I love the stand. It's like it would almost really fit well minifigures fine. It's, uh, it's but then the cool cockpit is massive. It. It's not complicated. Oh, There's wow. nothing uh, technical about it. Uh, you just simply line this white piece up here. It's just a peg system. That's, that's uh, pretty smart, actually. Right? And uh, it just lays flat onto it very well, and it has the the gunship position if you will i don't like there's actually a hole downwards. when you don't have it on the stand there's a hole in the base i'd want to display it without the stand honestly there's also a back i'd want to display it as landed note that there is indeed a back turret the rear the turret is always a nice feature I, I can't tell whether i like the doors closed or open i i way. i think i prefer them open no, but i want i'd want it in a no, landed no, position up to you i guess if you want to have the doors open or not do the turret it, balls the front turrets do they the go fully into is the body this going to fit on my shelves this thing's huge it's yeah it's literally the width of my table that's exactly that is, the width. that is insane and this is like 30 inches that's crazy holy cow that is that is a very see he's speaking my language now because it's someone that it's so uh that has a lot of 12 inch um something crazy figures. long it was an honor to talk to Hans and Jens. That, that's Q ridiculous, actually. actually. I've just like I just looked over at a twelve-inch figure that I've got. I just looked over at my amazing, uh, my Billy that here. I got. It really is. Well, that's actually ten-inch. So three of those. To it, that's insane. Of of the clones, Revenge of the Sith, Clone Wars, or really just a Star Wars fan, you are going to enjoy. I do this wonder, model. would you be able to I modify it into a uh, to come. into a Clone Wars model? Would you be able to take off the turrets and then, really uh, I think you'd have to change something about the wings? Well, there we go. I do want to quickly just look again just at like the... Commander. Uh, so, the so yeah, David is calling it a commander. It's not a commander. That's a lieutenant. Because Mace 
d- I remember Mace calls him a lieutenant. Like, he calls that... I mean, it looks really nice. Though, now I'm looking at it, I think the only exclusive part is the body. Because that's the legs from the 501st. They're just plain yellow arms. And we've had yellow uh, phase ones before. We might not have had them in the modern look. We might have only had them in the Clone Wars style. But I'm pretty sure the only thing exclusive is the yellow on his chest. When it comes to that mace, though, um, I'm not too versed on faces in lego so that might be a pre-existing face but it, lo- it looks new to me it looks new for mace at the very least uh the body does seem to just be the one we last got for mace there may be some distinction i think the belt might be slightly different um i haven't had a mace window since the first clone wars version so i'm not completely certain of whether that's uh, a new torso but it does look very similar to the last mace that we got but the legs, I do believe, are brand new. So technically, technically, it is a uh, a new figure. So yeah, I mean, I'm not, I don't have, a, I mean, I don't have an issue with it being Mace and a Lieutenant. But, like, it should have been Jedi Bob and Cody, personally. For, for I think most people agree with that, it should have been Jedi Bob and Cody, because... Jedi Bob came with the original uh, playset. You know, he's such a integral part of the Lego Star Wars mythos. Um, it, it's a shame to not get an updated um, flesh tone Jedi Bob. And we have yet to get a Phase 2 Cody at all. And we haven't had a Phase 1 Cody other than from Clone Wars. Despite him, you know being pretty integral to Star Wars in the grand scheme. I don't know. Like, I understand they wanted it to be accurate to Attack of the Clones, specifically. But, I don't know. I'm I'm not... Especially when, based on what David showed, they don't even show the scene of, uh, of Mace and, and the Lieutenant in the book, in the booklet. So, you know, they show more of Yoda and they have more Yoda iconography... So why didn't they give us a brand new clone, uh, sorry, Attack of the Clones Yoda instead of Mace? You know what I mean? As I, I, I'm i very much mixed on the minifigures because they look great. And I might end up buying some of those uh, lieutenants on, on Bricklink when they become available, uh, even though they'll probably be selling for far more than they should be. But yeah, that Mace. I'd, I don't know. I, I like Mace Windu. I like the character. Um, Samuel Jackson, of course, one of the best actors ever, especially for like action and sci-fi and stuff. So, you know, I'm I'm all for getting a Mace Windu, a new Mace Windu, but yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not overly sold. But anyway, uh, that's gonna be it for this video. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>